Hello everyone, this is Nathana Rutherford with Vol Basketball Fever here for another Tennessee basketball breakdown with LSU this weekend in Baton Rouge. It's going to be a tough game. But thank you all so much for tuning in. Again, if you're here, uh, subscribe to the channel while you're here. Like this video. Go ahead and comment down below your thoughts on this game because it's going to be, I think, an interesting one as well as the last couple games have been for Tennessee. Uh, Share with your friends and let them know about the channel and about our podcast also, Vol Basketball Fever. And Lady Ball Basketball Fever as well, if you're a Lady Balls fan. But Tennessee goes into this game against LSU this weekend on a one-game winning streak. They beat Ole Miss in one of the ugliest games I've ever seen. Uh, Tennessee was able to finally pull away there. And overtime, didn't lead at any point in regulation that they made five other six shots in overtime to win 66-61, or 66-60, excuse me, whatever it was. Uh, Tennessee beats Ole Miss in overtime in Thompson Bowling Arena. To go back on the road, where they were just last week when they played Alabama, now they're back on the road to play LSU in Baton Rouge, a place where Tennessee has not won in a very long time. They have struggled big time in Baton Rouge. They have not won there since 2015. And do you know who the head coach was back then? Because it wasn't Rick Barnes. It was Donnie Tyndall, actually. Tennessee beat LSU 78-63 in 2015 with Donnie Tyndall as head coach. So Rick Barnes has never once won in Baton Rouge as Tennessee's head coach. In fact, the Vols have lost three straight to LSU and five of the last six games they've played against LSU. So Will Wade has had Rick Barnes' number. I think he's only beaten Rick Barnes. I think Rick Barnes has only beaten Will Wade once, maybe twice uh, since he's been at LSU. So it's been very tough going for Tennessee against LSU, whether it's been in Thompson Bowling or Baton Rouge. But this game will actually be the matchup between the number one and number two defenses in the entire country at least according to Ken Palm. LSU has the number one defensive efficiency on Ken Palm, and Tennessee has the number two defensive efficiency on Ken Palm. Both teams are really good defensively. Both teams are not great offensively. In fact, the offensive numbers are actually pretty similar. There's a lot of defensive numbers that are pretty similar between the two teams. Um, but one reason why LSU is so good defensively, they're only allowing 55.6 points per game, which is the fourth lowest in the entire country. They're only giving up 65 points per game in the SEC play so far. Teams are making only 19 field goals per game against LSU, which is the second lowest in the country. And they have the number one field goal defense in the country, holding teams to making just 34.7% of their overall shots. That's not from three. That's from the entire field. Teams are only making 34.7% of their shots against LSU this season. They've held opponents to under 40% shooting in 10 of the 14 games they've played so far this season. And they're undefeated in those games. So a perfect 10-0 when holding opponents to under 40% shooting. So far this year, Tennessee has shot 40% or, or under 40% in five games. And they're 2-3 and three in those games. So Tennessee's offense, a lot of those, it feels like, have come in the past, I guess, what, three or four weeks or so. The Tennessee in, uh, in five of their games this season have failed to get more than 40% of their shots into the bucket and they're two and three in those games and Ole Miss or to the LSU is undefeated when they hold opponents to under 40% shooting. Also like Tennessee's defense, LSU's is predicated on forcing a lot of turnovers. Opponents average 19.3 turnovers a game, which is one of the best in the country. It's top 10 in the country in terms of uh, forcing turnovers a game. They have forced 20 or more turnovers in a game seven times this season and an opponent has never had fewer than 11 turnovers against LSU this year. Tennessee also forces a lot of turnovers, though, again, like I mentioned, uh, averaging 18.2 per game. So both these teams averaging 18-19 turnovers a game uh, in terms of forcing their opponents into 18-19 turnovers a game. Uh, and, and Tennessee is forcing 21 per game in SEC play so far, which is the most in conference play. Both Tennessee and LSU are in the top 10 of the country in steals per game as well. So these two teams... Uh, it's not just kind of unforced errors that other teams are committing. These two teams are also really good at picking off the other team and enforcing these turnovers. LSU on offense and defense, both kind of, they're a really good rebounding team and both some really good size. I have, I think, four guys, maybe five guys uh, who they play consistently who are 6'7 or, or taller, 6'7, 6'8, 6'11, and 6'10, I think, are kind of their, their big, big guys they have there. They average 41 and a half rebounds a game, which is the 18th best average in the country. They gobble up missed shots on defense and don't really allow that many offensive boards uh, to opponents there. 
They have seven players on their roster right now who are averaging more than three rebounds a game, including three players averaging more than five and a half boards a game. So crashing the boards is going to be hard against LSU, and Tennessee hasn't had the greatest post play this year. So Tennessee is going to need to do what they did against Arizona and really have Olivia Kamwa and John Fulkerson and Urosh Plashik have very intense, aggressive games and really attack the boards on both ends of the court for Tennessee, I think, to, you know, pull off this. But I guess it's an upset, actually, because I think LSU's favorite in this game right now, uh, according to Vegas. But right now, uh, LSU has, to me, easily the, the SEC sixth man of the year in Tari Eason, a Cincinnati transfer. Uh, he doesn't start for the for the Tigers. He's come off the bench in every game he's played so far this year, but he leads the team in scoring. He's averaging uh, 15.6 points per game, and he's second on the team in 7.3 rebounds. So he comes off the bench... But he is really good. So don't don't let it fool you that he's not starting. He must you know he must be just kind of a, a pretty okay guy. Now he's he's the leading scorer, and I think he's sixth in the SEC in points per game. So he's a really good scorer, really good player. He's six eight, two hundred fifteen pounds, and is actually you know he's phenomenal inside the three point line, making almost basically making sixty percent of his two point shots. Uh, he and Darius Days are the the two bigs to keep an eye on in this game. And of course, ball fans know who Darius Day is. He, he's been at LSU for what feels like an eternity. This is his fourth year there now. Uh, Days also isn't afraid to shoot the three, so he's not just a, a guy that pounds down low. He will shoot the three. He's making 35.4% of his threes this year, which is pretty good for a guy who's like, I think, 6'8 or 6'9 and, and 245. So um, pretty good three-point shooting percentage for a, a big, and not just like a stretch forward, like a guy who's actually got some size and girth to him too. Speaking of of both those guys, ball fans are probably pretty familiar with a, a, a trio of LSU's most, I guess, notable players right now. I mentioned Days has been there for four years. Uh, also, Atari Eason played at Cincinnati, played against Tennessee last year. Uh, he played when, when Tennessee, and that, that was another rock fight of a game, but when those two teams played, uh, Atari Eason played and had seven points and seven boards. Days is averaging 10 points and 6.7 boards for Tennessee. I think, I think he's played against Tennessee three times, and this will be his fourth time playing against the Vols. Uh, Xavier Pinson, the report guard transfer from Missouri and we're playing against Tennessee this weekend. This will be his sixth game that he's played against Tennessee. So he's very familiar with the Vols. Uh, last time he played Tennessee when he was with Missouri, he dropped 27 points against the Vols uh, and he's averaging 13.4 points per game against Tennessee. So Vol fans probably know a lot about who some of these uh, LSU Tigers are. They don't have the the smarts and the the you know the guys in the past, but they still have guys that Tennessee fans, I'm sure, you know, are very, very well aware of who they are. But despite, to go back to kind of the offense here for LSU, despite the, the low offense production for the most part in terms of not having great offensive efficiency, they're currently ranked 86th in offensive efficiency on Ken Palm. They actually love to push the pace. They're ranked 54th in tempo on Ken Palm. So they, they like to push the ball, push the possessions a lot and push the ball and try to get a lot of transition buckets because actually 27.6% of LSU shots this year have come in transition, which is 66th in the country. Tennessee has only faced two teams this year that have a higher percentage of their shots coming in transition. Arizona, who ranks 10th, and Alabama, who ranks 58th. And Tennessee uh, is 1-1 one one in those games. Uh, but LSU is going to really try to force turnovers and get a lot of transition opportunities in this game. So Tennessee has to be very, very, very careful with the ball. And Tennessee usually is. They're, they're one of the averaging one of the lowest turnover rates in the country and have a, a super high assist to turnover ratio. So that's going to be huge for Tennessee and be a big key as well. So LSU has some experienced players, guys who've been in, in college for a while, but not many of them are experienced at LSU. You, you, of course, you have Days, who's been there for a long time, and Eason and Pinson have been you know in college for a few years, but they didn't play at LSU till this year. They're new to LSU this year. Days is the only multi-year starter returning from last year. You have a couple of guys who were on the, the roster from last year. You have uh, Milani Wilkinson starts now, and he started 14 games last year as a freshman for LSU. Eric Gaines played as a freshman last year, too, and he started, I think, one game. He made a start recently, I think, against Auburn, I, I want to say. Uh, maybe at either Auburn or Kentucky, he started. So he's a bench player, typically, but he plays a lot of minutes for them still. But he's a guy who, um, if I remember, that's who I'm thinking of. Yeah, he... He's been there, but it's, again, his second year, he's a sophomore. Everyone else, basically, on, on LSU's main squad that they, they play in the rotation are either transfers or freshmen. So you have Darius Days and you have Wilkinson and Gaines, who returned from last year, who started or you know, were key players last year for LSU. 
rest of the roster are were brand new to the team this year, basically. You had a couple guys that were still from last year, but I think LSU only returned like 30% of their minutes from last year. So we talked about on the podcast that Tennessee, you know, they had a core group of guys that were from last season, but a lot of their, you know, basically almost all their entire bench is a bunch of new guys, and you're starting a new, a, a new guy also with Kennedy Chandler there. It's even more so for LSU that they are somewhat young and also somewhat inexperienced in terms of being at LSU with that experience. I will say, though, one guy to kind of keep an eye on, name, uh, an eye on too, is Justice Williams. He made his debut for L- LSU just a couple games ago. He didn't play at all in non-conference play, uh, but he, he made his debut against Auburn. So he's played in two SEC games, and he played 23 minutes in that game, had seven points, three rebounds, and two assists. Only played six minutes against Kentucky, but he did get three points and a rebound in those six minutes. Kind of moving on here a little bit to talk more about the Vols specifically, not as much about LSU. As I mentioned earlier, both teams are fantastic on defense. They both have struggled on offense. The Vols are going to be at a size disadvantage, but they should be able to slow down LSU's offense as long as, again, as I mentioned earlier, they limit their turnovers. LSU is not good from three. If you think Tennessee's bad from three, LSU has been just as bad for the most part. They are making just 31.6% of their threes this year and only 28.8% in SEC play. LSU currently has the second lowest field goal percentage in SEC play this year, just making 35% of their field goals in the two SEC games they've played. In fact, against quality competition, that's one thing I've kind of talked about, the LSU kind of almost paper tigers in a way. Um, They've not played a a murderer's row of a schedule. Against their quality competition, against kind of high majors, essentially, LSU struggled to score. They've played five high major teams so far, Penn State, Wake Forest, Georgia Tech, Auburn, and Kentucky. And they're averaging just 66.4 points per game in those contests. And they're allowing 61.4 points per game in those games. So again, not allowing a whole lot of points, but also not scoring a whole lot of points, which also sounds kind of like Tennessee with the the, the high major teams they've played with the exception of the North Carolina game and I guess kind of the Arizona game. Uh, Tennessee has not put up a lot of points in their high major competition this year. As I kind of mentioned earlier too, forcing turnovers is key to Tennessee winning, and especially, you know, their defense does let a lot, but it's just key for Tennessee winning, period. The Vols are undefeated this season when a team turns the ball over 17 or more times. The Vols are 8-0 this season when their opponent turns the ball over 17 or more times. LSU has done that th- uh, three times this year, so not a whole lot, but they have had 17 or more turnovers three times, and they're 2-1 in those contests, so their lone loss on the year right now uh, has come in a game where they've had 17 or more turnovers, so... They are, they've not, they've not eclipsed 70 points in any, any of those games as well where they've had 17 or more turnovers. So that's a big key. If Tennessee can force a lot of turnovers in this game, but they can, you know, you don't have to force 27 like you think it's Ole Miss. But if you can get LSU to, you know, have 17, 18, 19, 20 turnovers in this game, that's really, really, really going to increase your odds of winning this one. Uh, Santiago Vescovi, uh, he's been great against LSU. If you remember, he debuted at Tennessee midseason against LSU, uh, and he dropped 18 points, six rebounds, and four assists. He was six of nine from from three in that game. Also had nine turnovers in that game, but again, it was his very first game of college basketball ever, and he goes out and drains six threes and has 18 points. He's averaging 15.5 points per game against LSU and is nine of 17 from three uh, from uh, from distance against LSU. So he likes to play against LSU, and Tennessee's going to need him because he's been the most consistent best player for Tennessee here in the last few weeks. This season, Tennessee is 1-1 one one versus teams that are ranked between 60 and 90 in the Kim Palm offensive efficiency. LSU ranks 86th, so they slot right into there. Uh, Colorado had the 84th offensive efficiency, and Texas Tech had 68th. So Tennessee is 1-1 one one against teams that are kind of similar in, in composition to what LSU is offensive efficiency-wise. Tennessee has allowed just 55.5 points per game in those two games. Fortunately for Tennessee, they haven't also, you know, didn't really score a lot of points in those games themselves. Um, on the flip side, Tennessee's offense ranks 54th in offensive efficiency on Ken Palm, which that number keeps climbing or I guess dropping, however you want to say it, in the, the way Tennessee's offense has been playing. LSU's 2 0 versus teams in that 30 to 60 range. So again, kind of that same area where I've slotted in LSU's where I'm slotting in Tennessee in that range. Uh, when it comes to teams with Ken Palm offensive efficiency, Belmont ranked 32nd and Wake Forest ranked 41st. LSU has only given up 57 points per game in those contests. It has faced four ranked opponents in the AP poll, and they're 2-2 two two in those games with wins coming against UNC 
and Arizona and losing to Villanova and Alabama. This will be just the third time that LSU's faced a ranked opponent, but it'll be their, their third consecutive game doing so. They faced Auburn and they faced Kentucky, so they're one and one in the previous two. Again, they didn't really play that many good teams in non-conference play. Now they've gotten to SEC play and they've not looked as nearly as good as they did in non-conference play either. So I think this, you know, I think some of LSU's numbers are, are padded a little bit, but they're still a really good team. They're still a team that I think Tennessee is going to struggle against because I don't know, I don't, I don't like the matchups there really at all for Tennessee. Because of another thing about to mention here, Tennessee's not been very good on offense away from Thompson Bowling Arena. In five games this year away from Thompson Bowling Arena, Tennessee's averaging just 66.2 points per game. And that includes 68.5 points per game in true road games. Away from Thompson Bowling, Tennessee shooting just 39.4% overall and a paltry 23.4% from three. So Tennessee is going to have to find a way to get some offense somehow in, in this road game, uh, unless they want to do like a Colorado game where they just really, you know, defensively smother LSU. But Colorado's defense wasn't anywhere near as, as efficient, as good as LSU's is. So we'll see. I just don't, I don't, I don't expect it to be nearly as much as the rock fight as the Ole Miss game was because both team, both these teams kind of like to push tempo and, and get out in transition. So I expect this to be in the sixties, maybe the seventies, but I don't think it's going to be a particularly clean, uh, beautiful looking game either. If I had to guess, this will be the third straight Kim Palm top 15 team that LSU has faced. Of course, you know, talking about Kentucky and Auburn, those both are in, in the top 15. Tennessee is ranked right now number 15 in Ken Palm. Uh, LSU will be, however, the fifth top 20 Ken Palm team Tennessee's faced this entire season. So this will be the fifth time Tennessee's faced a team inside the top 20 in Ken Palm. That's Texas Tech. That's Arizona. That's Villanova. That's now LSU and Alabama. Tennessee's just one and three in, in those games so far, however, in those other four games against the, the top 20 t Kim Palm teams they've played. So I don't know. There, there's a lot I don't like about this game for Tennessee, but at the same time, like I, I don't think the LSU is as good as the stats might suggest. I think this will be a hard fought game, but I think Tennessee has struggled mightily against Will Wade and, and haven't won in Baton Rouge in a while. And like I said, it's been, I guess, six years since they've done it. They don't, you know, they don't play there every year. But still, it's been a while. So hopefully Tennessee can find a way to win this one. Hopefully John Fulkerson, Kennedy Chandler, bounce back after not very good performances against Ole Miss. Hopefully Vescovy does his usual thing against LSU and goes out and drops 15, 16, 17 points and is efficient. Maybe one, somebody else will step up like a Justin Powell or Olivier Camwa, and we'll see some better post play from Tennessee in this game. Maybe Brandon Helmy Hatfield gets more minutes and he goes out and, and balls out. But whatever it is, hopefully Tennessee finds a way to win. Thank you all so much for tuning in. We try to do these every time Tennessee plays kind of a big game. So really now that we're in SEC play, try to do this before every SEC game. And, and when Tennessee plays Texas as well, we'll definitely do it when it comes March as well. So be sure to subscribe to the channel here and like this video, share it, comment down below as well. Turn on that little bell for notifications so you know when we upload a new video. Come back for more of these breakdowns and also listen to the podcast while you're here. So thank you all so much. Really, really appreciate it. Again, I'm Nathaniel Rutherford. See you guys on Saturday.